Welcome back to the channel everyone. If this is your first time here then make sure you subscribe for weekly Unity tutorials and tips. Today I'm going to be talking you through attributes. Now the eagle-eyed viewers amongst you may realise that I've already done a tutorial on attributes before. Uh, I've since deleted it because it was before I had a decent microphone and it was also before I had a computer. I recorded that tutorial on a Surface Pro, so the aspect ratio was terrible. So I thought we'd give it another go. So by the end of this video, you're going to be able to upgrade your inspector scripts from something like this, for example, to something much more pleasing to the eye, like this. So let's just jump over to Unity and get started. <laughs> So as you can see here, all I've got is I've got an empty game object called some sort of weapon and my attributes tutorial script attached. Now you can see we have space for a name, a description, three different types of damages and a public boolean. But if we just quickly take a look at this script, we can see that we have a private boolean as well that we can't see in the inspector for obvious reasons. But if we go back over this isn't the nicest looking script I've ever seen in my life. So we can throw in a few attributes to make it look a lot nicer. So we'll do these one by one and we'll always jump back over to the inspector and see how they look. So the first one we're going to cover is header. Now attributes are denoted by square brackets and they will affect the variable that they are directly above. So we'll add in a header and this takes one parameter which is a string and we'll just put out weapon data we jump back we should see weapon data pops in as a header above our section we can make as many headers as we like we'll throw in another one for the damage data and then another one for uh, boolean data and we can see everything's already looking a lot nicer so let's move on to the second attribute that will be affecting uh, numeric values now you're never going to really want for example 3000 nearly 4000 damage for a, a weapon so what we can do we can limit this to a minim minimum and maximum value and we do that with the range attribute so again, our square brackets, we add range, and this time it takes in two float parameters. That's a minimum and maximum value. So we want 0 to be the minimum and 100 to be the maximum. And like I said before, it affects the variable that it is directly above. So we'll need the same range variable or uh, range attribute on all three damage parameters. We jump back over, we see we now have a slider which goes from 0, doesn't let us go any further, to a maximum of 100. And if we try and overkey that, it'll always just jump down to the max. So again, this just adds that little bit of customization into your scripts, helping mitigate any user input errors when developing your game. Next up is one for more the team-oriented developer process. Say, for example, weapon name wasn't obvious as to what it was. Well, the next attribute I'm going to show you is tooltip. And what tooltip does is whenever you hover over the variable name, you'll get a little pop-up that just gives you a little bit of information of what that is. So we'll just say this is the weapon's name. Duh. Sorry, my missus has been listening to a lot of Billie Eilish, or whatever she's called, and it's stuck in my head. So we pop back over and highlight. We can see the weapon's name. Duh. Now obviously, in most cases, like weapon name and weapon description, the field is obvious what it's for. So this could be used sparingly only when you've got obscure variable names. Next up, we have one to give us a little bit of padding in between our variables. 
So, for example, in the inspector, say we wanted a little bit of space in between weapon name and weapon description. Well, the attribute we use for that, surprisingly, is space. We just add in space. That doesn't need to take a parameter. We can see we just have this tiny little bit of space that we've been given between the two variables. Now, there is an override for this method wherein it takes a integer value and that is the number of pixels of space that you need. So if we add in 50, for example, this is going to be overkill, but we'll see how it looks. We should see a larger amount of space appear in between. Now, I rarely ever use the customized space value. I usually just leave it as its default space. Just gives you that little bit just to separate out certain variables. Next up, we have two that do quite similar things, but in my opinion, one is a lot better than the other. So we'll just take out this space 50 there. Now, what I'm referring to is a larger text field for string inputs. So our weapon description currently, if we start to type a description, this is a Lothric sword from Dark Souls, the game. I have no idea, I'm just winging it here. Right, so we can see if we have a long description, we have to slide and scroll about to see the full description. It'd be a lot better if we had a larger box underneath. So like I said, there's two ways of doing this. We can add, first of all, the multi-line attribute. And multi-line will take an integer value, and that is how many lines in height you want your box to be. So we'll just say five, for example. And we can see we have five lines worth of data. Now, we still need to scroll through this, but we can do a uh, carriage return and carry on typing underneath. This is my least favourite. I never really use this one because the next one I'm going to show you is, quite frankly, a lot more useful. So we'll just go ahead and remove multi-line and we'll replace it with text area. So we pop back over. We can see that it changes into a larger box underneath. And if we just copy and paste this, we can see that we now get a scroll bar as well. So we could, again, pass in an integer value, say we want 10. And that should give us a... Sorry, it needs a minimum and maximum value. So we'll just call this 10 by default. So we'll always have 10 lines in the description. And again, we can go down and we have a scroll bar. As you can see, this is a lot more useful. Next up, we can show private variables in our inspector if we want to edit them, but we don't actually need to access them outside of the class that they're in. So to do this, we'll take a private bool and we'll add serialize field. If we pop back over, we should see in our bool data, we have access to a private bool that we can toggle on and off in the inspector. And on the flip side of that, if we have a public variable that we actually don't want to amend in the inspector, we can hide that. So we'll take a public bool and add in hide in inspector. And as we can see, we've lost our public bool, but we've also lost the header above it as well. And that's because the header is directly above public bool. So we can just put that down underneath and we should get it back. And there it is. And one final thing I'll show you in this tutorial is how to serialize your own custom classes. So take our damage data, for example. We have three integer values inside our script. But I've also gone and created a damage values class, which has those identical damage values. Now, currently, if we were to remove this and put in a public 
damage values damage values we won't be able to see this in the inspector now the reason for this is it isn't serialized so we can pop over to our damage values class and above the class declaration this time not a variable we can add in system dot serializable just like that we can pop back over into unity and we'll see we have damage values if we extend that then we have uh, three damage values that are already set with our range and just one more thing before i let you go there's a attribute package available for free on github this one to be exact it's called naughty attributes and what it does it adds a lot more attributes that aren't actually native to unity it's very easy to install just have it in your pack in your project and all the instructions are extremely clear now this could be a paid package i have no idea why he's giving this away for free but currently he is so i'd download it now before he catches on and starts charging for it i'll put a link to this in the description it is extremely useful and a must have for a lot of my games if you've learned something today then drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel you can also find us over on social media for more bite-sized unity and c-sharp tips i've been mike for comp3 interactive and i'll see you again soon